Chapter 16 of Campfire Girls at Twin Lakes. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Lucy Burgoyne. Campfire Girls at Twin Lakes. Or The Quest of a Summer Vacation by Stella M. Francis. Chapter 16. Langford Checks Up. The twelve girls in the boat landed and proceeded with Catherine and Hazel up the steps to the top of the point, where a conference was held. The two advance scouts reported developments in detail, much to the interest and delight of the other girls. The progress made thus far was so encouraging that everybody showed a disposition of impatience at the first sign of inactivity. We must go right back and get permission from Mr. Ferris to locate our camp somewhere near the Graham home, said Catherine. We ought to get our tents pitched just as soon as possible, and we mustn't run any risk of not being able to find Mr. Ferris today. Don't you think it would help to allay their suspicions if we all remained here a while and looked around as if interested in the scenery just as tourists, as Alia Atwood suggested. No, I don't, Catherine replied quickly. Either that man Langford suspects us or he doesn't. If he suspects us, he has grounds for his suspicion, and any such attempt to throw him off the track would result in failure. I think we had better assume that he knows what we are up to, and act accordingly, without appearing to admit it. But won't they try to cover up the evidence that we are after? Julietta Hyde reasoned. Of course they will, Catherine answered. That will be one of the most interesting features of this adventure, said Helen Nash, who already had a reputation wider than the campfire circle for natural shrewdness. When they begin to do that, we'll have some great fun. Can't you point out from the lake the place or places where you think it would be well for us to locate our camp? Miss Ladd inquired, addressing Hazel and Catherine. You can get a pretty good view of it right from here, Hazel replied. It's right up the shore between those two cottages, which are about the same distance up from the water, and have similar paths and flights of steps running down to their boat landings. Between those two places is a stretch of timberland that doesn't seem to be used by anybody in particular. We didn't explore it because we didn't have time, but it surely must contain some good camping places. We saw several small open spots near the road, that could be used if nothing better is found. We must make a thorough inspection, of course, before we select a site, but that won't take long and can be done when we bring our outfit up here. We ought to take a run in the boat along the shore and see if we can't find a good landing place, Catherine suggested. Wouldn't it be delightful if we could find a suitable place on the side of that hill and overlooking the lake. Let's take enough time for that. It's a good idea, said Miss Ladd warmly. Let's do that at once, and then run back to Twin Lakes. But remember, girls, don't say anything about our mission on the boat. The boatman would be sure to start some gossip that probably would reach the ears of the very persons we want to keep in the dark as much as possible. They were soon back in the large canopied motorboat, and Miss Ladd gave instructions to the pilot. The latter cranked his engine, took his place at the wheel, and backed the vessel away from the landing. A few moments later the big twin, as the owner facetiously named the boat to distinguish it from a smaller one, which he called the little twin, was dashing along the wooded hill shore which extended nearly a mile to the north from Stony Point. They obtained a good view of the section of the shore, 
just north of the Graham cottage, and picked out several spots which appeared from the distance viewed to be very good camping sites. Then the prow of the boat was turned to the south, and they cut along at full speed toward Twin Lakes. The run was quickly made, and Catherine and Hazel hastened at once to the Ferris real estate office and presented their petition to Mr. Ferris in person. The latter was much interested when he learned that a fire of campfire girls desired permission to pitch their tents on land of which he was the local agent, and still more interested when informed that they were students at Hiawatha Institute, whose reputation was well known to him. He gave them a pen and ink drawing of the vicinity, indicating the approximate lines of the lands owned or leased by cottages then in possession, and granted them permission, free of charge, to locate their camp at any place they desired, so long as they did not encroach on the rights of others. An hour later, the squint-eyed man, whose activities have already created much of interest in this narrative, entered the office of Mr. Ferris and inquired, Are you agent for the land along the lake, just north of Stony Point? I am, the real estate man replied. Do you allow campers to pitch their tents on the land for a week or two at a time? I don't object if they are all right. I always require some sort of credentials. I wouldn't allow strangers to squat there without giving me some kind of notice. I granted permission to a bunch of campfire girls today to pitch their tents there. Is that so? Where are they going to locate? Just beyond the Graham Cottage, if you know where that is. That is where some friends of mine would like to camp, said Langford in an affected tone of disappointment. I don't think I'd care to grant any more permits in that vicinity, Mr. Ferris announced, rather meditatively. I feel rather a personal interest in the girls, and don't want any strangers to pitch a camp too near them. Your friends might, perhaps, locate half a mile farther up the shore. I'll tell them what you say, Langford said, as he left the office. Five minutes later, he was in a telephone booth, calling for number 123M. A woman answered the ring. Is this Mrs. Graham? He inquired. Yes, was the reply. This is Langford. I just called to inform you that the parties we were talking about have obtained permission to camp near your cottage, You'll probably see something of them tomorrow. Thank you. And I'll be at your place tomorrow afternoon, between three and four o'clock. I'll expect you. That ended the conversation. End of chapter 16